I guess it's welcome back really. It's been a while since I've been on YouTube in any videos, but uh, you know, life gets in the way, you know how it is. Uh, we're heading into winter now, and I am in the fly shack, cracking bedside table that by the way. <laughs> uh, I'm in the fly shack, the materials are out, stuff scattered everywhere, YouTube's on, uh, and I'm at the time vice pretty much most days now. Um, although there might be some grayling fishing and some perch fishing or pike to be done. There's only so many days you can, you know, deal with icy ring pieces before the novelty wears off. So I'm just going to be sat tying some flies and after some great events throughout the year, you know, the Peacock uh, Club events that we've had, Mallon and Green events and the BFFI. And just speaking to some of you guys on YouTube, Instagram and socials, just thought I'd start tying up a few of my patterns and just showing you what I'm tying. Um, I'm not an intricate tyre, I don't like, you know, counting the antennas on a caddis and spending four hours of fly. So there's just going to be some really super simple patterns, patterns that I fish with, I guide with, uh, and patterns I've just got so much trust in, I've caught so many good fish on. So yeah, hopefully you enjoy it. If you don't, don't bother watching again or leave a horrible comment. But here it goes. <laughs> so we're going to go straight into it with a super simple fly. Um, since year and infants become popular, it's sort of like a must-have in trout and grayling boxes uh, all over the world, really. Super simple to tie, loads of different variations. Um, and more importantly, it gets down deep fast in small sizes as well. Starting off on a size 14 hook, which uh, is a little, a little big, really. I don't really fish these on 14s. But I got a 14 hook and a three and a half mil slotted copper bead. Um, tying them in a larger size here, just because it's easier for you guys to see really what I'm doing. But uh, one of the advantages of these flies is you can fish these in 18s, 20s, and they just sink so fast. Um, bushy flies like hares ears or, or heavy dubbed flies in those sizes. It's a struggle to get them down. You have to use heavier point flies um, just to try and pull the small ones down. So the great flies to use, um, great under clink and dink too, the duo, because you can use a super small fly that sinks so fast. Um, it's brilliant sometimes in uh, the right conditions. But anyway, we're gonna start off, as usual, uh, quick whipping a nano silk in 12 volt, pretty much standard tying, uh, unless there's a, a reason why I'm using any other thread, I'm on the nano silk. Yeah, so I'm not that's my tv playing and ruining the video good start and to start with we're having cochlear tail love it really light doesn't affect sink rate too much and it's got a lovely barred effect throughout the material i'm looking for about three or four fibers now it's a really simple fly with a, a varnished body so overdressed tails really stand out. And when the whole purpose of the fly is to sink quick, an overdressed tail is just doesn't make any sense at all. So I'm gonna wind that all the way up just to keep my taper. Tail roughly about as long as the hook to the bead. Play about with it. There's no there's no set truth there. Some people like long tail, some people like short. I'm going to cover that down and just begin to put a layer on. Just to build up. I'm not going to do too much because it takes me ages to build up with nano silk. I'm going to whip that off. Whip it ugly, it doesn't matter. That's not the important part to the fly. That just ties our tails in and gives us a base. This is the important part. I'm using the micro glint in medium olive by Semperfly. The beauty of Purdy guns is you can use so many different materials. You can use different colored thread, you can use tinsel, um, or you can use stuff like this micro glint, which creates a lovely sort of reflective textured body. So that's what I'm going to use today, but they're so versatile and you can you could pretty much fill a box just with these flies if you wanted to. So I'm just going to work down the body. I've trimmed the tag end before I get to the tail, just so I haven't got that extra bulk underneath. 
uh, my wraps. Making sure to lay it all flat. Don't want to push the tail down. That's very important that I don't push the tail down with the material. If it means I leave like I've done there, there's a tiny bit of black thread showing. So be it. It's not, it's not going to ruin the fly. But pushing the tail down, I feel like it does. It ruins the profile of the fly if I uh, bend the tail down. So I'm going to wind the material up and I'm just building a nice smooth body throughout the fly. Obviously tapering thicker towards the head. Like so. Now as this is glint material, I'm turning the fly upside down to do the whip finish. Two is enough to do that. The reason I've turned it upside down is sometimes you get a little knot of material just where you've tied off the whip finish. I can cut a little bit of a tag there. And when I do the wing bud in a second, that, see that little bump there? When I do the wing bud and the resin after, it'll cover there. But if I did it underneath the traditional way, you still might see that bump. From this point now, it's just on with a nice, nice even layer of resin. It doesn't have to be resin, you know, you could use your varnish for those that don't have resin. There'd be no problem at all using the old Sally Hansons. Just gonna get a little bobbin there, bobbin needle, and just work that out. Just too much on me. I'll just put too much on the fly. So too much on me. <laughs> just too much on the fly. I'm just working it up and then pulling it towards me. But I'm working from the tail upwards, so I'm pulling any excess resin up towards the top of the fly. That's about good for me. I'm I'm not I'm not about over bulking it. You don't want to over bulk these flies. There's there's no point. The idea is to make a thin hard body that sinks properly fast in the water. I'm just gonna set that with a torch. Again, if it was varnished now, just put it to the side. Let it sit for a while. Perfect. Now from there, I'm going to move over to some black resin just to create a wing bud. I don't want much of this. Just the tiniest amount. Normally flies out the tube and ruins the whole fly at this point. Pop that air bubble. A little bit more. Once I've got the amount I want, I'm turning it upside down. That just stops the resin under gravity, sliding either side the fly. If I do it that way up, it's likely to run down the side before I set it. But I quickly turn back over, set the fly. Doesn't take long. And once that's set, you have a very simple perdigan tied up, ready to fish. As you can see, the resin just in the slot there just creates a nice smooth domed taper into the body from the bead. And that's certain to catch you grayling and trout. Thank you.